One day, my patient, let's call him Scott, he's in his 50s, and he works as a cook, and seemingly out of nowhere, he develops this excruciating right flank pain, and taking ibuprofen was pointless because he was already... So he rolls up to everyone's favorite destination, where they do their thing, and when I go to see him, I say, Hi Scott, I'm Dr. Han. Oh my son is killing me! Oh my when did it start? Five hours ago. Uh, On a scale of one to ten. It's a f ten, man. I need a puke bucket. And I ask questions like, do you have painful urination? Have you seen any blood in your urine? And do you have any other medical problems? And a bunch of other standard medical questions for which he says no to all of them. And the physical exam includes me doing a half-hearted kidney punch to the back to check for costovertebral angle tenderness. If doing this elicits pain, it's known as a positive Murphy's punch sign, which indicates infection of the kidney. But if it's just a kidney stone, there shouldn't be any pain from this. In order to make the diagnosis of a kidney stone, you need either a CAT scan or an ultrasound. Ultrasound is great because it's quick and easy and totally harmless, which makes it great for children and pregnant women. Anyway, CAT scans take better pictures, and that's why in this case, it's considered the gold standard for testing, even though it costs more and exposes you to radiation. Sometimes for CAT scans, we give contrast through an IV to get a better look at things, but it's not needed in this instance because you can almost always see the kidney stones without it. So Scott gets a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, and we get a detailed look of his kidneys, ureters, and other organs. And boom, there it is, a 5mm kidney stone sitting there in the right ureter. The other nice thing about the CAT scan is that it helps to rule out other diagnoses that could present with similar symptoms, such as pyelonephritis, meaning infection of the kidney. But back to that kidney stone that is stuck in that ureter. The ureter is the tube that drains urine from the kidney to your bladder. It's 3 to 4 millimeters in diameter. So why is a kidney stone so damn painful? Well, the kidney stone itself is not painful. The pain comes from when the stone gets stuck in the ureter. In fact, once it makes its way to your bladder, the pain subsides. When it's making its course down that ureter, it causes a partial blockage, which slows the flow of urine to the bladder. As a result, urine starts to back up in the kidneys, causing an increase in pressure there. The pain is typically in the flank of the affected ureter, and that flank pain can radiate to your back or your abdomen, and sometimes to the groin, and can sometimes cause violent pain here, like getting hit in the nuts. Also, the ureter has smooth muscle in it, and it squeezes down on that stone as it tries to pass it along, and that's what causes that intense wave of pain. And that stone, kind of like how a rock cuts up your skin, ends up scraping the inside of the ureter, causing some bleeding there. Usually, it's not enough to make your urine red, meaning macroscopic hematuria, but when you provide a urine sample and they look at it under the microscope, they're likely to see red blood cells called microscopic hematuria. The nerves that go to the ureters not only sense pain, but they can trigger the brain into feeling nauseous, which is why kidney stones are associated with vomiting. Oh, and did you know that contrary to popular belief, passing a stone from the bladder out your pee hole actually causes little to no pain. So urinating out a stone usually does not cause pain. Why? Because most stones are much smaller than the urethra. Your urethra is about 10 millimeters in diameter. The average stone is five millimeters to seven millimeters. So larger than the diameter of a ureter and much smaller than the diameter of a urethra. If you're passing a kidney stone, you're gonna to wanna to know how long it takes to pass that little bugger. Could be hours, could be a few days, some might not pass it at all. Two thirds of stones pass within four weeks. Two to four millimeter stones will pass about 75% of the time, five to six millimeters about half the time. And big stones, meaning 10 millimeters or larger, only pass less than 10% of the time. But what happens if you have huge stones? You're not peeing out those bad boys. You're gonna need a urologist to come take a look at you. But you know it's way more common than average sized stones and big stones? Silent stones, the ones that just sit there in the kidneys, not causing any problems. They're relatively common, and one person was found to have 29 stones. So what happened with Scott? 
Well, he gets some IV fluids, he gets a medication to treat not only his pain, but to bring down the swelling in the ureter because it's all irritated and inflamed. And the medications that relieve pain and swelling are called NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. You know, like ibuprofen, Advil, naproxen, and the like. But Scott gets the most potent one of all, called Tordal, aka Keterolac. Yes, NSAIDs do have side effects, like kidney damage, stomach ulcers, and more, but they generally don't cause any problems if only given occasionally. So it's a great drug for someone who has a kidney stone. But because his pain was so intense, he needed a little something extra, and morphine did the trick. But he did get a little itchy from it. Please, scratch my back! This is driving me crazy, please! Scratch it! Oh, yeah. And if possible, you want to try to catch that stone when you urinate. That way, it can be analyzed by your doctor to find out what's causing the stone and how to prevent future ones. Either way, drink lots of water.